Well, hello, everybody. Guess who it is? It's your host of a comedy advice podcast, Stefan Sitani. And I am here today to pick you up, put you in my vehicle of a comedy advice podcast, and we're going to go for a little ride. I'm going to be like your Uber driver of your mind, of your giggle box, of your belly, because you're going to be working those abs with a couple little laughs. Today, we've got a very special episode for you. Is the ride okay so far, by the way? I know you're in the back seat. It's kind of awkward because I feel like we're pals, but it's just how the policy is. So you got to sit in the back seat. Is the air okay? Do I need to adjust the AC? Is the music fine? I am a big Nickelback fan, so I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. But guess what? I'll turn it off so you can just hear me talk. I'll be not even paying attention to the road because I'm so fixated on you. I want to make sure that you're having a good time and you will with this guest, Lexis Chardet. That's who's in the front seat, guys. Lexis Chardet, hilarious comedian. And she's also got her own show, Fart Talk, where she talks about farts and life coaching comedians, where she life coaches comedians. We have an amazing time on the podcast together. It's just chemistry so good that chemists would be jealous. They'd be like, how does you get these equations? I think I went from German to Italian to French. But hey, that's how I see chemists. I don't see American chemists because I don't think that they make anything except for McDonald's French fries. But, you know, it's, it's pretty great chemistry there with our banter, our back and forth. And we learn a thing or two. We talk a little bit about some cool stuff like manifesting. Manifest sounds like a, a big party with lots of man, just so much man that manifest. So there's like ma Manny mans named Manny. And that's what manifest is all about. So I hope you guys can attend that. It's man's only. So link is in the show notes. Woman's can speculate. They can, <laughs> they can spectate. They can also speculate. But I think that is, oh, don't forget to follow her. Watch her show, Fart Talk. Watch Life Coaching Comedians. And follow me, subscribe. If you haven't already, leave a review. Just to show you guys the love and support you give me, which is so much. And I really appreciate it. Just hit 200 subscribers on YouTube, which is awesome. You guys are so good. You leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, which helps get me climbing to the top of the charts. I'm top 100 improv comedy podcasts constantly, which feeds my ego. I tell everybody all the time. It's on my resume as a digital marketer. I also, I tell my wife, I said, do you know who you're talking to? I'm in the top 100 improv comedy charts and Apple podcasts. Okay. That's how I speak to when I'm having trouble with T-Mobile. I'm like, I, you know, do you know who I am? You're talking to somebody that's a top hundred improv comedy charting podcaster. I need to speak to your manager, but to you guys, you don't see that ugly side. You see the bright side of somebody that's in the top hundred improv comedy charts because we show our love to each other and you guys have helped gotten me there. That's not the right past participle, but you know, we're pals. So you're going to look past it. And I'm going to read a review that somebody left. It says, I'm sorry. It's five stars. It says, I played this podcast for my horse and it motivated him to finally get a job. I love my horse husband, but he hasn't been the same since the 9-11 tragedy. Thank you, Stefan. Man, well, a lot to unpack there. I didn't, I, that was a whole ride for me maybe a horseback ride. Also 9-11 tragedy affecting him. Didn't have a job since then. That's a long time. It's 20 plus years. So I hope your horse husband is alive. I mean, I'd hate to be a dead horse. Let's gallop on, shall we guys? Uh, this is not the main time to speak about horses. So let's, I think we're at the tail end of that part of the intro. And then we're going to go right into the main part of the podcast. So thank you guys so much. I love you very mucho. And I'll leave you to future me, but stay in the Uber, stay in the Uber. Okay. I'm just going to get out of it for a little bit and then I'll come back. Okay. Here we go. God, this, you know, this is different. This is 11 AM. I'm doing a pod. Usually it's at the end of the day. Yeah. I'm really, I'm exhausted, mm -hmm. but now I've got, I'm actually still exhausted, <laughs> but I feel I still got a little bit of trace elements of 
you have a mate in my system. So <laughs> I feel oh, a little rejuvenated, a little bit. How are you, Alexis? I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a little gassed because I just got out of hot yoga. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I used to go like, I used to do yoga every day. Like at the beginning of the year, I was doing yoga every day, sometimes twice a day. Wow. And I was just like. Now we're just bragging, aren't we? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm just doing like the hot yoga once a week. And last week I discovered the spot underneath like where the heater, where the heater is. So you're just like sweating like Ooh. crazy. And I like, kind of, I actually really like it. Really? <laughs> so I always reserve that spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's is it just one person can be in that spot or do two people no there's like a there's like um there's like three heaters or like these long things where the air comes out so that's like that whole row that you can get so three lucky yogis or strategic yogis yeah. like yourself mm -hmm. are there the same three people there usually or two others um are there the same three people in the class or no. are they the same people in the class Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. It's it's like you have to reserve your spot. You can reserve spots up until it's full. So okay. I try to reserve it a week in advance so I get the same spot. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. How's the teacher? What what goes? What's the proper ingredients for a nice hot yoga teacher? Are they different from a regular te yoga teacher? Um, I think every yoga class is a little bit different. And where okay. I go, I used to work there. So, like, I know all the yoga instructors, most of them. Uh, were you a yoga instructor yourself? No, I was a personal trainer at one point, yeah. It's pretty f***ing cool. Yeah. That's great. I can eat, I don't know how many push-ups I can do now, but... How many could you do before in your prime? Uh, in my prime, I could do, like, 40. Oh, f yeah. Okay. Well, you beat me out by 39. So <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't know why, but I could never do push ups that I, well. I can't do them that. I mean, now, like, I don't know. Also, like, once I became a personal trainer and I learned how to, like, use like my core strength, it's actually like harder when you're using all your muscles. Oh, you know? okay. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. weird. It's weird how, like, improper form can, like, make you do more reps with something. But then when you do it the correct way, it's, like, super hard. I feel that because when I have tried to use all my muscles, be not stiff, but be sturdy. Yeah. I can do less. Yeah. Like 12. And <laughs> yeah. then I can do 13 with improper form. So. Hey, at least you're in double digits. It's Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's a milestone <laughs> for me. <laughs> uh, but personal trainer, um, comedian, entrepreneur, you can do pretty much everything. And the you we're speaking of for all the listeners and watchers is Lexis Charday. That's me. It's me, you guys. It's me. It's her. It's her. It's her. I thought you were almost going to break it's out. It's me. In a Mario. It's me. you Lexis. <laughs> Fantastic. And we're on a comedy advice podcast with your host, Stefan Satani. Lexis, it's so, it's such a pledge to have, what a slurp. Power slurp. Holy <laughs> I feel I'm like just enjoying this uh, grapefruit fresca that <laughs> <laughs> Stephen gave me. So I good. feel like I feel like you just asserted dominance <laughs> right there with that slurp. I can't go any louder than that. Holy <laughs> that was good. That was good. I respect you more now. I mean, I respected you a lot before, but now I feel. Oh God. Well, anyway, Lexus, I feel like you're doing good. You just got out of hot yoga. How is, well, actually, let's also talk about your podcast, Life Coaching Comedians. Yeah. I had the pleasure of getting life coached by Lexis Charday. And it was, it Ms. was a, Miss Charday, my alter ego. Yes, Miss Charday. It was fantastic, I have to say. Yeah. I was terrified. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you didn't even have to do the big slurp to get me <laughs> intimidated. It was just, it was a really cool time. And I know we talked about it the last time a little bit, but since then, I mean, you've had, you've had some great comedians on there. I remember listening particularly to this episode with Rich Voss, yeah, who is a fantastic comedian. And he also is known for going on people's podcasts and shitting all over them. <laughs> and you held your own so well. <laughs> And I thought you did a great job on that. And you're so yeah, good. Yeah, it was fun. And you're so good at just setting the scene and mm -hmm. being able to command the scene and and allow people to do 
what they want to do. I mean, Mike yeah. Meese was a very interesting episode, yeah. but very entertaining. Yeah. I'm praying for him every night. <laughs> I hope he does. <laughs> I hope he gets better. But yeah, I told him I wanted him to come back more often. Have him be a re- recurring guest. <laughs> he d- yeah, he definitely, that would be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good one. But you're so masterful about, I mean, that episode, he has some serious problems and you were able to turn it into something that was beneficial for him Mm -hmm. also very entertaining Mm -hmm. and it wasn't like oh no i feel bad for mike it was really it was a really well balanced episode yeah like a salad with grapefruit really yeah Yeah, totally Mm. Mm, so good yeah one thing that i love about like doing that character is because it's it's the shit I really want to say uh-huh, that uh-huh. I feel like, you know, and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings saying those things. Okay, okay. So, like, having that alter ego persona, like, allows me to, like, be my authentic <laughs> self <laughs> in a sense where it's, like, entertaining and, you know, people don't get offended. Plus, the people that do the show, like, that actually, like, come on the show, like, they're not really easily offended. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have had some guests in the past where it's, like, there's only been a couple where we did the episode, and then after I put it up, they're like, yeah, you know what? Like, can we not have that on there? Because, you know, they talked about another individual. Or oh. They're uncomfortable about having that be out there. And, like, I, re- I respect that. So, you Fair. know, like, I get it. But at the same time, it's, like, don't be on my podcast then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're going to go on a podcast yeah. for being life coached. Yeah. And then that just shows how good you are because you're able to get those details out of them. And then they're like, oh, wait, yeah. I feel like I was hypnotized because I felt so <laughs> comfortable. Yeah. That's I great. had a uh, Kev the All Star on recently. His episode will be out in a couple of weeks. Mm. And uh, it, it was so funny because like, he knew what I was doing. Like uh-huh. he could tell what I was doing. So he was like cracking, like cracking up laughing and like, <laughs> like trying to avoid <laughs> everything. And then towards the end, he started like opening up a little bit more. I'm like, all right, you're gonna have to come back on the show. <laughs> oh, nice. I remember Kev before he was an all-star. He was... <laughs> when he was a porn star. <laughs> That's it. We were in a movie together. It was so <laughs> weird. Um, no, I remember if I'm thinking of the right guy, um, he's like a, a big dude, very, very deep voice. Yeah. Very, he's a funny guy. He's got guy. the fro. Yes, he's fro. got the fro. Yeah. 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 yeah so I uh, co-hosted with him at uh, yeah. Improv Media one night. So like oh, okay. he hosted the okay. first half of the, open, of the open mic and I hosted the second half of the open mic. Nice. And like... Uh, I'm one of those people, I'm a very visual person. So like if I ever see someone that reminds me of someone or whatever, I'm always like, who does that person remind me of? You know? And like everyone has like at least like a hundred doppelgangers like in this world, you know? Yes. And so like I'm like looking at him trying to figure out like who he looks like. (laughs) And then I talked about it when I went up on stage. I when I was younger, like when I first started kind of like babysitting, like Mm -hmm. in my pre teens and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. uh, there was this little girl I was babysitting and she wanted to watch like Rocky and Bowinkle and she had like all the Rocky and Bowinkle tapes, right? Uh And I'm like, which one do you want to watch? And she like picks the picture and I pop in the I pop in the VHS and it's like a '70s porno. Oh oh, no! (laughs) And that was him. (laughs) It looked like he looked like the guy that was in that. I was so scarred from that. I was like, where do I know this guy from? And why do I have these weird feelings? And I was like, oh. And then and I think the fro too. The yeah. fro, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he it's very funny that you say that because now that I'm picturing him in my mind, the image emblazoned in my mind of him, he's got the look like yeah. he could do he, porn. Yeah. Or he's been in porn. Yeah. In like he looks like he probably did it back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. I, you know what? I'm gonna take let's see if I can do an alpha slurp. That was a no, beta slurp. That was like such a bitch ass slurp. <laughs> let me show you let me show you how it's done. All right, all right, let's see. How do you fuck okay? Better. <laughs> Just don't <laughs> You gotta like puff the lips up like just perfectly and then like suck air. As you're as you're drinking, that's better. Yeah, that's oh, pretty good. Oh man, that's okay, pretty good. okay. <laughs> wow, I feel I feel born again. That was a great <laughs> slurp. I'm gonna do that in my yeah. next social gathering. I adopted slurping as a child to to annoy my parents. 
And now my daughter does it to me. Oh, no. <laughs> How do you feel about it with your daughter? Are you okay? Do you out slurp her? She's I'm sure like, you can. I mean, she slurps sometimes, especially when she's like eating soup. But what I, what she does that drives me nuts is like, you know, when you have like a, a drink with ice and a straw yes. and it's gone and then you just like are like trying to get the last. She does that and it's like uh, really loud. Okay. I see that. My wife <laughs> I'm like, are you too. saying that you want more? <laughs> what? A- like when she does it in a restaurant, I'm like, that's rude to the waiters. Like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. I always, the sound was not the most pleasant to me, but it is a form of communication it now is. that I think about it, yeah. where it's like, more. Yeah. Give me more now. Yeah. Okay. Or like in like the gay community and like the drag queen community too, you know, they, when the tea, you know drinking the tea or spilling the tea oh yes and <laughs> i think it was on drags race and there was some drama going on they all had their drinks and they're all just watching they're like <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh just minding their own business but slurping <laughs> this is so good i did not know the many uses and forms of communication yeah through the slurp yeah plus it might be one of my top 10 favorite words slurp 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 it's so it's, I guess it's not quite an onomatopoeia, but it's got a lot of motion going on. Slurp. It's funny how it has the word slur in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And erp. Erp. <laughs> <laughs> Moving from the erps. <laughs> that sounds like a slang way of saying herpes, too. <laughs> She's got the erp. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You've got the erps. <laughs> Sounds cooler if you say it like that, I guess. Anyway, which, speaking. Which kind of herb? Herb A or herb B? Or yeah. Is it B, C? I don't remember. Do I have Jenny herbs or do I have got the mouth herbs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I've to... never heard of Jenny herbs before. Jenny herbs. It sounds like, <laughs> sounds like my middle school crush, actually. <laughs> oh, I loved Jenny herbs and her. Oh. But anyway, um, speaking of the gift that keeps on giving, Fart Talk. Yeah. Wanted to talk a little bit about that because that is also an amazing show. Just switched the lineup. You've been running steady with it, but you just had Ricardo Leon sign on as the new co-host. Yeah. How's it been going? I think there's been one episode. We've had two so far. Two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's fun. It, like, I'm grateful that it's a comedy podcast because it sure. it gives us more grace to like figure out how to co-host Mm -hmm, uh because like on the first episode like (laughs) we're and even on the second one we're like interrupting each other and i'm like no you go and he's like no you go and i'm like no no and and ricardo (laughs) ricardo is uh he's he's just a nat naturally a type of guy that likes to like push your buttons you know um (laughs) yeah yeah i can see that i can see so then he turns it on like even more you know and he (laughs) reserves it all for the show so he's like super mellow when we're like you know doing our like pre like post meeting or Mm pre-production meeting or whatever and like he'll be like super like straight and like all business and serious and then like as soon as the show starts like the asshole comes out (laughs) (laughs) that is so funny i feel he is one of the funniest people i have met in the valley i have to say hilarious he's a great writer you know Mm -hmm. his timing is epic and like and I feel like he, I feel like because we have a good friendship, like he can, sometimes he knows what I'm thinking before I even do it, you know? Nice. Um, so it's, I'm really excited to kind of see everything that we'll do. Here comes the burp. <laughs> that was all right. That was, that was okay. It was very airy. It wasn't mild, but it was medium, I would say. By it the w- time I get done slurping this fresca, I'm sure. <laughs> I had a beta burp. I don't know if you even, if the, if the mics even picked it up because I went to the side and was like. <laughs> So, I just, I'm not good with my mouth sounds. I really gotta up my oral uh, abilities, I yeah, guess. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, um, so I also wanted to talk about, because you do so many cool things. You also do stand up. And I've seen you on, I think I saw you, uh, the last time I saw you was at Philip Jewel Dietrich, don't know his last name. And did you Rashad and Rose? Yeah, Rashad Verdugo. and Rose Verdugo. And um, are you ready? ready or, yeah, ready are you or ready? Not? Yeah, yeah, ready or not? That was last summer. Yeah, Damn, holy, co- oh my god, time yeah. is flying during the COVID comedy shows. And we're like, as long as 10 people show up, we'll start the that's what it was like at House of Comedy. Dang, I, I think I booked three shows at House of Comedy last summer, and 
and actually no four and are you ready ready or not and Mm -hmm. lamar's novelty show um would you date a comedian those are the two that actually like they they had enough people show up that we were able to Mm -hmm. actually have the show but then there was two other shows where i was supposed to perform at and we didn't sell enough tickets so they shut it down oh dang dang that's crazy they, both of those shows are really great shows too by yeah, the way the, yeah. and you were one of the only ones that made it past the five minutes was I? yeah you made Dude, it i almost i almost i almost uh and you know what's funny you weren't expecting it so when everyone was like yeah i was expecting you were like, it because somebody didn't tie me correctly oh okay okay yeah i don't so did, i don't know who this no, I so I did my five minutes. Like I know five minutes. Right. I did my five right. minutes, and then I was like expecting like the light to come on or anything. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all right. And so like I was like, I guess I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. And I think you went with I, alligator yeah, puns. Yeah, I did alligator <laughs> puns. <laughs> oh, that was so good. So. Good. It's so awkward. I watched that set again. And I was just like, because you know when you do video and you're like, oh, like maybe I'll use this for like, put this up on my YouTube, use it for a comedy right. festival submission or whatever. And right. It's just like, nah, nah, not using that one. Oh, <laughs> Maybe I'll take a clip from it, but. Oh, man. It yeah. was good, though. I wish I would have seen you on Lamar's Shoot Your Shot. Would you date a comedian? <laughs> yeah, that was a fun That was a fun show. Nice. Yeah. We ended up, Lamar and I are doing a, a new show, Trash or Treasure, Ooh. where we're going to bring up eight comedians, not at the same time, uh-huh. but it's going to be two, one versus one. We're going to bring them a topic like um, uh, popcorn with... Caramel corn. Let's say caramel corn. Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's caramel totally corn? a thing. Trash or treasure. And one person takes the trash side, one t- person defends the treasure side, and then they battle it out in a debate. The audience decides who made the most convincing argument, and then that person gets to advance to the next round. Okay, so it's kind of like Im- improv comedy a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yes, very but much. But it's not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to make a pun. You're just making an argument. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Make an argument I on, like and it's just silly stuff. Like pineapple on pizza mm. is a trash or treasure. And so That's we're going to make the comedian. Really? Yes. Treasure? Yes. Oh, man. I have some thoughts about this. Yes. I, we actually, Lamar and I argued that we did some filming on the streets and we asked random people on the street if they could settle a debate and one of them was trash or treasure pineapple, pineapple on pizza. pizza that's like a never-ending debate yeah yeah know? we settled it though yeah we actually decided it is trash so <laughs> <laughs> i mean come on like spicy and sweet who doesn't like spicy and sweet it's a uh, wait where did the spicy come from well, that's how I eat my pizza. Okay, well, please tell me. Let's dissect this. Because so maybe, maybe you found a treasure. Yeah, I think maybe it's like, what are you putting on? Now, if you're doing a Hawaiian pizza, that's trash. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Hawaiian pizza okay. is trash. Okay. Now, you're doing a pepperoni jalapeno pineapple. Whoa. Dip that shit in some ranch. Whoa. Oh, my God. Change your life. Slurp, slurp. <laughs> I, I want- <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an adventure that sounds like the hot yoga of pizzas <laughs> yeah. where it's super intense but you're like i like this mm-hmm. this is great yeah okay yeah. that might go in the treasure column mm-hmm. hawaiian pizza no trash. i mean you could do the hawaiian pizza and just add jalapenos on it okay but then yeah. at that point it's not hawaiian it's like it's a spicy hawaiian spicy hawaiian okay yeah all right yeah okay yeah. i can see it yeah all right well you're swaying me but it's decided already <laughs> trash no i'm kidding anyway you can't just say pineapple on pizza it's like what kind of pizza you know mm. so you'd be very good for this yeah what are you doing in october we've got an october show as i'm well. coming to your show <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but speaking of live shows, I know that you did a did a live coaching comedians at El Charo. Yeah. Do you have any future plans for Um, I definitely want to. So I've been trying to do like this new thing with my life. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I've been trying to like let opportunities come to me rather than trying to find the opportunities. 
Um, and I just feel like the opportunities are better when things come to me rather than trying to like force things to happen. So, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I And that's what happened with El Charo. John Fletcher came up to me and asked me if I wanted to do a, a live podcast. And I said, yeah, totally. That's badass. Yeah. I think there's something to that as well where – Jim Kit, here I go with the beta burps again. So, <laughs> I, <Simp>. J- J- <laughs> I'm Steph the Simp, and this is a comedy advice podcast. <laughs> Please watch. So, um, but, and I don't know, I don't know if this is the same as what you're saying, but let's verify. I was watching Jim Carrey, I believe, give a commencement speech, and he was saying, if you want something, ask the universe for it. Yeah. But then it doesn't matter. Don't worry about how it comes to be. Yeah. Just ask the universe for it. Yeah. And put and it out open. there. Yeah. And be open, open to respond. And I think like that I was, um, I've been studying this thing called human design. Have you ever heard of it before? No. It's, um, I mean, the best way I can describe it is it's kind of similar to like if you were to look at your astrological birth chart, but it's like okay. a different system of like how your body like stores and runs energy, like your natural energy system in your body. Oh. And so okay. I guess like 80% of the world's population are called generators. So we're, we're, we generate energy. Oh, okay. I and, thought we were just the backup population, just in case the initial <laughs> yeah. ran out. Okay, okay. I'm and following. um generators they they make the energy. They're they're yeah. the happening. Mm-hmm. So we don't actually have to make anything happen per se. Um it's kinda wow. like um how how Ricky says it, he he called me the lighthouse the other day. Like you're the lighthouse and people come to the light. So a Damn. lot of people are like that. Uh, it's, Did he say that on Fart Talk? No, no, no. I was, was going like, to say that's extremely poetic. Yeah. He's, okay. He's poetic. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, you're right. Yeah. You're, you know, you're the lighthouse and people look for the lighthouse. And I grew up in Oregon. We have lighthouses all over the coast, you know, so it's like very, some, nice. that made sense to me. So, nice. um, and then, you know, it's like you're you're the happening you're the talent so when you have things going on people are going to naturally come to you like i'm sure you get people that ask you to be on your podcast like all the time yeah yeah so instead of like always trying to search and like because for a while like the reason why i got rich boss is because i started had i started reaching out to comedians that were traveling here nice and um reaching out that way and um and i did get some people that you know said yes but i don't know man like (sighs) rejection is a funny thing you know oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> so you're like throwing throwing things out there and not getting any bites and you're just like whatever which is typical when you're like reaching out to like people that are a little bit more high caliber but instead mm-hmm. what i've been mm-hmm. doing this time is when i have someone come on the podcast i ask like hey who would you recommend that would be a good guest and then nice. say like hey so and so recommended you and you know that way it's like a more of a referral and oh, people are that's... a little bit more interested to do so that's great. And everyone knows somebody, you know, like everything's within arm's reach. So, you know. Yeah. You know, what if like I was super tight with uh, Kevin Hart or something, right? And you're like, hey, looks, did you know anyone? And I tell Kevin like, hey, Kevin, like there's this podcast. If you want to do it? You never know. You yeah, never yeah. know like who knows who. So it's better to give that person a good experience and then ask for a recommendation than, yeah. than trying to track people down. They don't know who the hell you are. Yeah. I think that's very smart yeah. and i have some i can't remember if you asked me or not but i have some recommendations for you oh as sweet well. yeah cool happy to send them over yeah via my mouth i'll just <laughs> the simp mouth i'll do yeah my thing. i would just like to point out when we were walking to the studio he tried to wave hello to his wife and she did not say hello back so clearly we can see who wears her pants in this really oh my god she purposefully i i know she was on a call but she purposefully was like don't look don't look mm-hmm. at that don't look at that what a simp what a, what a little dick he doesn't even slurp loudly and, I was like, oh, fuck. and my wave was so obvious i was like hey babe it was a big circular wave full of energy <laughs> but no but no anyway so well my husband's doing a stupid podcast i'm sitting here <laughs> making all the money <laughs> why do you have to quit his job this is all he's doing now and it's drowning in debt oh that's horrible can't afford the frescas anymore these are the last ones <laughs> but uh you know well, i'm definitely gonna enjoy mine then. Oh, please cherish it cherish it it's lo- <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Okay, now I want to... My wife is going to hate me after this. Uh, It is more... 
<laughs> slurp, slurp. I'm going to say that now. I feel like if something's really cool. Yeah. Slurp, slurp. Slurp, slurp. Slurp, slurp. Is that a thing already? <laughs> slurp it up. Slurp it up. <laughs> slurp. All right. Well, my... There was a technical difficulty at this point. Stephen did something dumb, but I fixed it. Back to the show. So Fantastical? Into... Fantastical? Is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> it's uh it's a little slurpy i think you know fantastic and oh maybe a whimsical it's been a whimsical yeah time. whimsical is the word yeah it's been a. I can't think of any other good words i'm a simp so i really my vocabulary <laughs> is just so limited <laughs> i try to slurp up what i can i'm like fantastic oh i got the all in there oh god so <laughs> We're going to get into some advice. Okay. Alexis, are you ready? Yeah. Am I? Are you giving me the advice? Am I giving you the advice? What's happening here? You and I are going to team up. I'll give other people advice. And give other people yeah. advice. Yeah, okay. Because we, we have it going on. All right. I mean, besides my slurping skills, yeah. we are pretty solid. Yeah. And my, my uh, marriage crumbling because, you know, <laughs> my wife won't even acknowledge me with a wave. But other Sucks than that. Sucks to be a simp. <laughs> oh, God, it's horrible. So we've got an inspirational quote. Before I go into mine, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help them get through their days. If you ever had a time. No, I'll just stop now. Go ahead. Well, um, a shout out to Broken Drift Productions. Oh. They, they gave me this. Uh, I participated in their giveaway. Okay. And in the box they gave me, they gave me these cards. They're like affirmation cards oh, um, badass, made nice. for creatives. And they have like cool drawings on it and cool sayings on it. And there was one where it was talking about not taking anything personal, which is, you know, one of the four agreements. And so I take that to heart. Never take anything personal. And uh, so the the saying was never take anything personal because, you know, Whenever someone does something that's rude, it usually has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them. Like maybe they just pooped their pants, you know? <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot more pants pooping going on yeah. than we really know about. It's yeah. like Men in Black with the hidden aliens. It's mm -hmm. just like there's a lot of hidden sharding going on. Yeah. So when anyone's a dick to you, just, you know, be like, oh, yeah, they probably just pooped their pants. That is beautiful because it's taken me a long time. I'm still, still, because I'm a very, I, I feel like I can read people okay, and I, if they feel something, I kind of feel it a little bit too, mm -hmm. and so I like to be a people pleaser and make people feel happy, and so if people are rude to me, it hurts me to my core, and I am starting to finally feel like, okay, now, just because this person wrote me a really rude email or rejected me uh, to come on my podcast or whatever, I'm like, you know, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's them. People maybe. are rude to you about coming onto your podcast. Yeah. They're like, are you kidding me? I heard you on the last episode slurping like a <laughs> little boy. And it was awful. No, thank you. I start every episode with a slurp. And <laughs> do now. And yeah, no. Some, I mean, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. And, and if you go through publicists or managers. Oh, yeah. Sometimes there are ones that are very nice and polite and then other ones are like who are you yeah who is this yeah I'm like oh, it's me i'm stefan like that was a rhetorical question yeah don't respond to me yeah so it is what it is but anyway i like that it's almost like if you're in front of a crowd imagine they're naked if you're in front of a rude person imagine that they've just pooped their pants yeah because i mean have you ever pooped your pants before yes yeah several times it's like you're you're like oh shit what do i do you know it's like panic mode and you're not you're not gonna want to talk to anybody you're not it, gonna you're not gonna be polite to anyone because you're trying to figure out how to get this shit out of your pants you got to get that yeah that that bottom clean it's like flight or flight or fight exactly yeah yeah so. and uh and then so obviously i would be sitting there in my own filth, emailing people being like, no, I'm not going to go on your podcast. <laughs> so I get it. I get it. Um, that's a nice quote, Lexus. Or summary. Of Affirmation. Yeah, Affirmation. Whatever, yeah. That's really good. <laughs> so that's pretty good. I've actually got a quote too. It's not by any person, but uh -huh. it's by a robot called Inspirobot. And <laughs> it, it's, it uses AI to okay. dive deep into the libraries of mankind, looking mm. through sacred and non-sacred scrolls, mm. professional documents, mm -hmm. uh, memos perhaps. Mm -hmm. And then it takes all those words and just Jumbles puts them, them together, together for a quote. Okay. So this week, Inspirobot says, nod your head like a giraffe. 
when enjoying a nice day in the park. Since when does a giraffe go to a park? Good call. <laughs> Good call. Isn't, isn't that just the it's zoo an, park? A, an eternal park? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so maybe in this case, the giraffe is in prison, aka the zoo. <laughs> the zoo. And it's just it's not a terrible quote. <laughs> <laughs> Poor I, giraffe. And it's just nodding its head because it's like, you know what? I can't control these circumstances. I'm going to be happy. Maybe the zookeepers poop their pants. Maybe. And they're being rude to me right now, not letting me get out. Maybe. So I'm just going to nod my head and enjoy the nice day. Yeah. Yeah. That guy looks like he might be short. It's hard to tell. He do- He looks the exact opposite of a giraffe. Yeah. He's very short, no spots. <laughs> And yeah, he look well. He does kind of look like he's about to nod his head. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> there, for all of the listeners, there is Inspirebot provides an image that accompanies the quote. Yeah, it looks is, like a meme almost. It, it yeah. does. It does. Okay, beautiful. Now that we're nice and inspired, <laughs> these quotes. We're gonna go into some questions from Reddit. This first question says, "Parents stole a petty." amount of cash upon returning to my parents place because i left my wallet i was surprised to find 50 (laughs) dollars missing i asked my parents and they admitted to taking it they refused to give it back to me because they disagree with my life choices what do i do seems too petty of an amount to involve the police they literally stole from me and admitted it as a broke college student 50 dollars is a lot of money and that's the end of the question i feel like i need to know more information yeah, what life choices are you doing that your parents don't agree with? Being a good person? First, like, my, you gotta first teach you. my first thought was heroin. Oh, I was thinking that his parents, he lives in a den of thieves. And so they're like, son, you need to take up the thief lifestyle, the tradition that our yeah. family is upholding. And he's like, no, I want to be a good boy and work an honest job yeah. and be a good person. They're like, we disagree with your life choices. Fifty dollars gone. Yeah, and then they admitted it. What a yeah. what a bold choice. Well, my advice would be, don't be broke. I mean, you, you can <laughs> make money. That's what we're trying to. Say. You could be a college student and still make good money. I mean, I made good money when I was in college. Oh, for slurp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for slurp. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna make it a thing one way or another i'm trying to fit it in the right shoe but yeah i feel i taught italian uh my last two years of college i tutored italian in college my f- second third year yeah i was able to make some money yeah you were able to make some- what did you do in college i was in sales oh dang what were you selling cell phones Dang. Yeah, I got the Palm Pilot, the Razor, the Blackberry. <laughs> Is that how you did it when those. you were so- Yeah. <laughs> That's so... Did the you do LG in- Flip. We ain't got the sidekicks. Gotta go to T-Mobile for that, but we got the LG Flip. Oh my God, I remember, remember the LG side- Chocolate. I had an LG Chocolate. Yeah. It was so... It was the little... It looked like a little pill, and then you slid, slid up. it open. Yeah. Damn. It's like all the all the hoes had sidekicks, and then all the ones that wanted to be a hoe had the LG chocolate. And I wanted to be the hoe. I was <laughs> yes, that was exactly me, exactly me. It was so nice though because it fit in the pocket. It was very tiny, mm-hmm. so it could fit nicely in the pocket, and then I could slide it out. And then I think there was a circular yeah, to play music. That was yeah. when they started having the music on there. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. So damn, you must have made. Some pretty good money if oh, you're selling yeah. cell phones. I made pretty good money. I mean, like, uh, uh, uh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it happens when I drink carbonations, like these bubbles. Like, I try not to drink carbonation when I'm like recording or like working because I'm on the phones a lot because mm. you never know when a burp's gonna come and you're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I like the noise after the burp. <laughs> 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 So it's like it sounds like goofy. I love it. Gahorsh. Would you like yeah. a cell phone? Gahorsh. <laughs> oh good. But uh yeah, I mean like I my like first year in college I had my own apartment and okay. I was a full time student and I had like three jobs. Like I was working the cell phone I was working the cell phone kiosk Dang. at the mall. I was working part time at the sunglass kiosk. And then I was working um, 
late nights at Hollister and the and the um in the stock room like doing all the stocks and returns and stuff like that oh so because when you work stocks you can work different hours and store hours so Mm -hmm. i mean i was doing how many credits were you doing i was full-time student Uh, yeah yeah so i mean like you know there's just like these like things in society that people say are, are normal and that's okay and that people decide to adopt those society beliefs like you know, being a broke college student or being a single mom that, you know, is always broke, never has childcare, can't keep a job. And like yeah. me being a single mother and being told, like before I decided I was going to have my daughter, I was told by a lot of people like your life's going to be hard. You're always going to be struggling. You're always going to mm-hmm. be doing this. You're always going to be doing that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I believed that for a while. And then at one point I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't have to be that. You know, I don't have to fit that statistic. And it's the same thing with college students. Like, you know, I mean, obviously, yeah. some studies are going to be more time consuming than others. But, you know, there there are ways to make money. And there's so many w- ways to be an entrepreneur, make money smarter, not harder, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel <clears throat> that was very well said. And I feel like a lot of the times, maybe not a lot of the times, but for me, there were times where I was blaming my situation on what had happened in the past or what just happened to me. And then I read something somewhere that was saying, you're resp- you might not be responsible in terms of what happened to you because you, you can't control it. Other people might have done things to you, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But you are responsible for what happens after that. Yeah. Your feelings, how you, how you choose to act, how, what you choose to believe, et cetera. You're responsible for that. Yeah. And then that really changed me in a lot of ways where I was saying, okay, this bad thing might have happened to me, mm-hmm. but this is what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to take the time to grieve or take the time to be mad, et cetera, because I think that that's necessary. Yeah, totally. But I'm not going to let it linger with me. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, similar quotes that I've heard. Um, you're not responsible for the trauma that happens to you, but you're responsible for the healing process. Oh, yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, it's your responsibility to heal. It's no one's job to heal you, you know. I like that. I like that better than mine because... I was just thinking of it today, what I was saying, and I was thinking, you know, I've ne- I don't think I've experienced really bad trauma. And so I'm thinking, I don't fully understand how that works. And I think wh- how I was saying it almost negates or, or says to somebody, just suck it up mm-hmm. immediately. But I was thinking, how can I say it better? And I think you said it better. Yeah, so. I mean, trauma is trauma. Yeah. It, it doesn't really matter what you go through. Yeah. You know, like every there's always going to be someone that has it worse than you with with mm-hmm. your perspective of what you went through. But that's true. Um, you know, like it's it's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, like I was reading about rejection recently. I'm doing some research about how re- mm-hmm. how rejection affects like the the psyche, and the brain literally cannot tell the difference from physical pain from rejection. Like the mental huh. pain. Yeah. That's why it's so terrifying. Yeah, your body, your mind doesn't know what's real and what's not. That's why. Wow. Um, that's why you know I'm you know you can cre- you can create the life that you want you know like you are what you think about it's crazy like how the subconscious really controls like our whole life so if you're Dang. if you're telling yourself you're a broke college student guess what you're going to be a broke college student you know yeah yeah and and i'm sure there's a negative nancy right now listening to what i'm saying being like oh <laughs> yeah this if, you, if you if you if you shit if you shit rainbows and 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 gold <laughs> And if I keep saying that that will actually happen, like, you know, like <laughs> I get emails every week. It's so annoying. Just stop. Li- no, please listen. Continue to listen. Thank but you I so mean, much. like prime example, you know, like, as I told you, you know, I'm in a yeah. relationship now and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I manifested that relationship. You know, I've been on stage telling this joke, telling jokes about being single for the last three years, you know, well, mm-hmm. probably longer, but I've had some sets where I'm like really focusing on like what my single life has been like. Mm-hmm. And I have a joke about manifestation and the law of attraction. And I say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking for the love of my life, the man of my dreams. He's six, three. Have you seen him? <laughs> no. He's also got a long dick. Have you seen him? <laughs> no. Well, let me know when you see him. And <laughs> I love that. And I got it now. Yeah, I lo- 
<laughs> I love that. And I got it now, and I'm very happy. Congratulations. <laughs> I now know two things about your boyfriend. <laughs> I don't even know God, his he's name. He's going to be but... so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, stop talking about my dick on the podcast. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I mean, it would be it would be worse if it was the other way around. Mm-hmm. If he was micro penis, then I think he would. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to be okay with it. He's going to be good. God. But, you know, back to manifestation. I've spoken about manifestation several times with several different guests. Ashley Rose, one of them. Oh, yeah. Who got me a little bit more interested and in trying it, where I've tried it on smaller things. Oh, yeah. But... I am really starting to believe that manifestation is effective and happens. Oh yeah, it's it's beautiful. It, it I I've gone through this tran- transformation on a lot of things where I felt like I have problems with faith and believing in things because oh, we all do. Then I get let down. Da- yeah, true. I, I get let down, or the thing doesn't happen, and I get disappointed. But instead, now. I'm believing a little bit more in certain things, becoming a little bit more confident in myself and believing that these things that I want can happen. And I feel like it's happening. But you're also, you're saying, you know, things are not happening and then I get let down. They're not happening when you want them to happen. Yes, yes, yes. You know, things are always going to happen. It just may not be when you want it. That's another thing. Yeah. That's another important thing because I used to try and have deadlines where I'd want this thing to happen by this time. I still think it is important to try and do something because there's stuff you can do too, right? Yeah, but, within your own but, power. But there's also a certain amount of faith where you, if something doesn't happen, it, you want something to happen in a year. It doesn't happen. I think it's okay. And you can still say, this is, I still think this is going to happen, just not right now. Yeah, and you're closer to it probably if you're working, yes. if you're taking small steps to work towards it, getting everything in order. You yeah. know, like, yeah. I mean, I I wanted to buy a house for a really long time, and I didn't mm-hmm. think that I was going to get it as soon as I did, even though I wanted it way sooner. You know, nice, so, nice. You nice. know, but and then then it happened, and you're like, oh, whoa, this is crazy, and then you're like. Rrr. And then you like low key kind of self sabotage yourself because you're like, do I want this? Am I ready for this? You know, and then. Yep. Yeah, you yep. got to let go and just ride, you know? That's, I feel like that's super important. That has been one of my biggest things is I have been afraid, I've self-sabotaged and I've been afraid of what's going to happen if something good happens, like I get a house or yeah, um, the podcast blows up or something like that. Because, and I was Be reading about what this. what you ask for. I was reading about this yesterday and this, somebody was saying, yeah, people are like that because even though it's a good thing, it is a change. And yeah. so when changes happen, we just are scared of change. Uncomfortable. And, yes. You want to go back to what you know. Yeah. 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 So get a job, jackass. <laughs> That's what we're trying to say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do let's do one segment called positive spin. Okay. So um, positive spin, I've created this segment because a lot of the times when something bad happens to us, we think of all the bad things mm. and the negatives. So I'm creating a scenario that is going to help train our minds to be able to think of the positives when a bad thing happens. Okay. So we can start applying it to real life. Okay. Although you've probably mastered this. But anyway, the scenario, Alexis, is you wake up one day mm-hmm. and you realize Holy shit, I am speaking a new language. I learned a new language overnight, fluently. Mm-hmm. I sound like a native. Mm-hmm. Is there a language you've wanted to learn before? Uh, Italian. I mean, I, I minored in Italian and oh. I was damn near fluent. And then, no way. Yeah, my junior year in college, when I went back, everyone went to Italy and studied Fucking abroad snobs. and I went to China because I've always, I mean, I still haven't been to Italy, but I was like, you know what? I, I'm, my family is, half my family is Italian. So nice. I was Plus like, Mandarin I'm, Italian, it's pretty close. To me, <laughs> totally. So. <laughs> but I was just like, you know, I'm going to go to Italy one day. Like uh-huh. I, I want to do something different. And I went to China. Okay. And so then I came back and junior year in college, you're literally taking art history language arts like all the shit that you learned in high school in italian so the only reason why i even passed that class was because i was taking a regular english art history class at the same time oh shit and so i was able to kind of like figure shit out but like my teacher literally was like i think you should drop out because 
you're just like you're not there like everybody else and so it kind of sucked but uh yeah i'm still not completely fluent dang well if you ever need to practice sometimes i'm always looking for people to speak oh yeah to. yeah I have the Italian keyboard on my iPhones. Like (laughs) same Z's. Same Z's. Oh man. Um and and I have to say, yeah, as an Italian major, that I I travel or I lived abroad in Italy and or studied abroad in Italy. And I did it at this very small town because they were like, you can go to Rome, you can go to Florence, and you there you'll be with you'll you'll stay in this not a hostel, but an apartment with other Americans and everything. Mm -hmm. But then if you go to little Ferrara, you'll be with an Italian family and you'll, it's a small town. So nobody speaks English. Yeah. And I was like, they don't want to be forced. Yeah. Yeah. Forced to learn it. Yeah. So it was, that was fundamental or it was crucial for me to take those further level classes. Yeah. I feel your pain there. Cause if, if I had taken those before I studied abroad, I feel like, I would have been fucked. Yeah. I would have been fucked. Yeah. So anyway. Anyway, so you speak Italian <laughs> fluently, mm-hmm. but then you realize, oh my God, I forgot English. Mamma mia, <laughs> I forgot English. <laughs> so uh, you're still here in the United States mm-hmm. of America. Mm-hmm. What What are the positives of this? I can go into any Italian restaurant I want and make a friend. Very nice. That's great. Yeah. Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. You are family there. You're instantly. <laughs> Not even family. Olive Garden. There's some <laughs> some really authentic Italian restaurants out here where the waiters, like, they only hire waiters that speak Italian. You have. Okay. We'll have to connect after yeah. this. I've got a couple that I love, but I would love to hear more. Some yeah. gelato gems, too. Holy shit. Yeah. Cool gelato. That's a, uh, I think it's called a more. And then, uh, there's no, anyway, whatever. So, okay. You got yeah. some good positives. Though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, and then, you know, I could just move to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Amazing. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I would do. That's the place where I want to retire. Oh, yeah. <sighs> like tomorrow. I want to, I, would... f- I want to find the house that my, um, that my grandpa was conceived in. I have pictures of it. It's in like, it's in uh, Genoa, and you could see like the, I guess like the Swiss Alps from the house. Like it's like that close to the border. Dang! And I have pictures of the house, and I would love to find that house and buy it. That is super cool. Yeah, that is super cool. I would love. I mean, I would love to live anywhere. I haven't been south of Rome, but my family lives up north at uh near lake major it's right on the border of switzerland and italy okay so that that's kind of why i look so austrian because i think that was an austrian territory before yeah but then also i have relatives that live in present-day croatia that used to be italy oh. right in a certain time between world war one and world war two interesting yeah yeah it's very cool Tri- uh trieste and then there's this Istria Peninsula in Croatia, and that's mm-hmm. where they live. That's cool. Yeah. So I would love to. I'd actually not like to be in any of those parts. I'd like to be in the island of Sardinia. Yeah, or... Sardinia. I've always wanted to go to Cinque Terre. Man, I went. It was so cool. Yeah. It. Did you eat at that restaurant, the, the cave restaurant? Did no, you go there? No, I didn't. Did I didn't even know it? about it. Yeah. That's super it cool. It looks badass. That's super... Did you get some limoncello? see yes i did yeah so good so so good where i went in ferrara they had a specialty bread it was called pane di coppia and it was basically this kneaded this knotted bread and so it had these long uh stems and then it it was all binded in the center Mm -hmm. very crunchy on the outside fluffy on the inside Mm -hmm. it represented the male and female genitalia (laughs) (laughs) forget about it <laughs> it was literally like sex in your mouth it was so it was great but they also were the tortellini capital of italy Yum. yeah so so good but anyway i think you uh, we had some really good positives we're gonna leave on a positive note lexus wanted to say thank you for jumping on the pod, this has been an awesome time learning a little bit more about you, what you've got going on, the positive vibes, and your strong slurp. Yeah, thank you. What would you, by the way, what have you got going on? Where would 
Should I have waited for that? I'm sorry. I feel like I. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I totally manifested this grapefruit fresca. Did you? Because yesterday I was at Taco Cello and they have the Jorritos sodas, oh, right? Oh, yes, yes. And I was like, ooh, what kind of Jorritos do you have? And it's like, tell me you have grapefruit. Like, no, we don't have grapefruit. I was like, ah, I got the strawberry. But then I was like, tell my boyfriend how much I love the grapefruit. And was like expressing gratitude for the grapefruit. Oh, look at you. And then I walk through your door and you offer me a grapefruit fresca. Oh, man. You are what you think about. You hear that, Taco (laughs) Cello? (laughs) Cool name. Anyway, where, where can people follow you? What have you got going on? What would you like to plug, Lexus? Well, you guys can follow me on Instagram, um, Facebook. Uh, I'm on TikTok. I my videos don't do very well there, even though they're awesome. <laughs> a lot of cat videos. <laughs> I have a I have a lot to say about TikTok <laughs> and their algorithms. I, okay, yeah, that's fair. Uh, Alexis Charday, L E X I S S H A R D E, and um, yeah, my uh, podcast, Life Coaching Comedians and Fart Talk, on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm around. Yes, you yeah, are. I'm around. And all those links are going to be in the show notes, people. So get on over there. Click on them with your little thumbs, whatever they are, and or, or toes. I don't know how you handle your computer <laughs> or your phone. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Lexus. Thank you for having me. Ciao. And that's the episode with Lexus. Thank you, everybody. Everybody for making it all the way through. This is your stop. I'm going to open the Uber door for you and you're going to Uber exit. And we had an Uber good time. So you little goobers, please, if you haven't yet, follow Lexus, support her, follow me, leave me a review and subscribe and give me, I don't think we can hug. That's against Uber protocols, but you know, tell your friends about me. Say this was the best podcast that you have ever listened to on Wednesday evening while falling asleep. Maybe you didn't listen to all of it, but guess what? You can just play it again. That's going to count as two downloads for me. So the more listens, the merrier for me. Um, If I'm, I'll be like Scrooge McDuck, just diving into all these downloads that you guys are providing me. So I love all of it. I love all of you guys. Also trash or treasure. Tonight is the October Trash or Treasure. There's a November Trash or Treasure already. November 9th link will be in the show notes. Well, maybe it won't because we don't have the link yet. But uh, stay tuned. Follow Trash or Treasure show on Instagram for more details. Guys, you are amazing. One more time. Just uh, can I find, can I get you right in the gooch with a smooch? You're wonderful. All right, guys. Bye-bye.